Many people tonight have already asked me, are you going to talk about scholarships, financial aid, that sort of thing. So I have a little bit of background there. Uh, the last 10 years have been spent doing college counseling or serving as the director of college counseling. I, I take that back. I've been here 13 years. My first 10 years were at admissions. The last 13 have been uh, in, in college counseling. Why did I switch sides of the house? There are two reasons. Uh, when I was working at Wittenberg University, and we have applications coming in, and there was a kid that I was leaning toward rejecting, and my dean called me in. He says, why would you not admit this student? I said, well, the GPA is not where our average is, the scores are, but maybe the kid didn't work, work up to his or her ability. He said, that kid attends an independent school. And Lake Ridge Academy is an independent school. So he said, you know, one thing I can tell you about a kid from an independent school, regardless of their background, they can do the work. That's point number one. Years later, as I'm serving as the Associate Dean of Admissions at the University of Rochester, there was something I saw in the college essays. They just seemed to be written better. The application just had more information. And as a parent of two, I thought, man, if I could get that for my kid, maybe I'd switch to that side of education. 13 years later, here I am. And the benefit of having two kids go through a place like, uh, like Lake Ridge. Uh, just a couple notes, you know, since I mentioned uh, our school, and I know this is not about Lake Ridge, but some of the things that keep me here, 100% of our kids, when they graduate, go off to four-year universities, and it is a graduation requirement. Two-thirds of our kids go to private colleges and universities, and one-third will go to public. And about 50% of our kids will go out of state, where 50% will stay in. But it's more the relationships. And I think that's what I'm here today is to talk about how to personalize the college process. And again, it's something I do with our students. I get to know each family and try to personalize the relationship so you find what's called the right fit. In thinking about the right fit, there are about 4,000 colleges and universities that offer a four-year baccalaureate degree and about 1,200 community colleges within that realm. So there's two-year colleges and there are four-year colleges. What's best for your child? One of the things I talk about with our students is understanding your individual formula. And what do I mean by formula? Well, we'll start out with your grades. We'll talk about how strong your high school is. We'll talk about your academic interests. Things that parents are concerned about, safety, how far the school is from home. Will my kid get a scholarship? Can my kid play sports there? We'll ask a number of questions to try to get the kid to where it is that they're supposed to go. And as I say that, the fit is extremely important for this reason. And I'm going to share some statistics with you as I get into my presentation. About 1.5 million students matriculate to college each year. How many think? How many people in the room would give me a good guess? And I said I would move around, so now I'm moving into to Keon Gregory Round, where I just want to be for a little free-flowing here. Uh, but I want to engage the audience a little bit. 1.5 million go off to college. How many, think, how many people have an idea how many do not return for the sophomore year? What percentage? About a third. One in three. Oftentimes, it's not because the kid wasn't equipped. It's oftentimes because of the, not finding the right fit. So again, I want to talk about the fit. Can anybody give me a statistic on how many students earn a four-year degree? Because if you're a parent in a room, college was a four-year proposition. How many students do you think earn a bachelor's degree nationally in four years? I heard 5%. I heard 40%. 20%. All right. I got to get to my site here. Let's see. How do we get out of this thing? I need some technology, but I'm going to share a site. But the, the number actually is 33% earn a four-year baccalaureate degree in four years. What is the number for six years? 70%. It's a good guess. Anybody else? 65. You'll be appalled to know the number is 48%. And one of the websites I'm going to share with you tonight is called College Reality Check. So 33% earn a bachelor's degree in four years, 48% in six years, and 52% ever. And I think it's important as you start your college search to understand who your child is, what your child's interests are, and start to look for the right fit. So the first site I'm going to share with you is called uh, College Reality Check. And I just loaded five random schools in. And so here's a website. So if you have paper or pad, you want to take that down, you can write the website. It's just collegerealitycheck.com. And it has a search engine. You can plug in any one of five colleges. You can click a compare button. 
and it will give you the statistics for that particular school. All right? But it also does some other things. It's going to show us, and I, put, I loaded five schools in here, some Ohio schools and some random schools. But so here, uh, graduation rate. So there's your national average right there. Can everybody see that? National average 33% in four years. And then I just I loaded some random colleges there. And you can see what their four year and six year graduation rates are. And you can do this for any college, any one of the 4,000 four year colleges, you can put that in and get the actual graduation rates. Again, I'm a parent of two. And it's different when you're the college counselor because you have too much information so you can tend to overthink things. But as I talked about, I feel every parent, and this is one of the nuggets, should have some absolutes. One of my absolutes is wherever my kid matriculates to and whatever I'm paying for, we got to be well and above the national average. i got to have good odds. I don't have money to throw away. So you want to have good odds. So again, plug your numbers in, see where the school statistics are. The other thing it'll show you is kind of five years out, kind of a monthly salary. So again, you see that. Then I also looked at the default rate. Default rate means they borrowed, but maybe aren't paying back for whatever reason. I think it's important to have that information. One of the things I talked about was the different types of universities, and I said I started out at Wittenberg University. So I want to talk about the four-year private liberal art college. What makes a liberal art college? Number one, there are no graduate degrees, so no masters, PhDs, or professional programs. Okay? It is training for graduate schools. The other thing that's about liberal art college, they're usually 2,000 students or smaller, and 99% of them are private. They tend to have higher graduation rates than the larger public institutions, and part of that has to do with its size. There's somebody there that will probably know your child, will probably know you, and be able to keep a closer eye. The second type of school would be what's called a comprehensive university, usually medium size, you know, three to 8,000 students. They will have master's degree programs, occasionally PhD, but mostly bachelor and master's and bachelor's and master's program, but also some professional degree programs like you can study business administration, for example, where the liberal arts college will hone in more things like economics or history or biology, so more general degrees, where the comprehensive school will have some specialized programs, say nursing, for example, and they tend to be medium-sized. Right here in Cleveland, uh, if I think about liberal art colleges, Overland College is a liberal art college, Hiram College is a liberal art college. Comprehensive universities right in our backyard would be places like John Carroll University and Baldwin Wallace uh, University. Those would be comprehensive colleges. The next university would be a national research university. That would be your Kent State University, your University of Akron, our flagship university, Ohio State University, that's my alma mater, or Miami of Ohio, University of Cincinnati. Those schools will have un undergraduate baccalaureate degrees, a master's degree, PhD programs, and oftentimes professional schools, so a law school, a uh, medical school, uh, oftentimes a vet school, so again, you can do it all there. The larger state universities tend to be your national research schools, okay? Oftentimes will be public schools. And again, even with Ohio State, you know, they have the main campus, but then there are also subsidiary schools like in Mansfield and Lima. So again, those schools tend to be larger, so 20,000 and up to give you that sense. And then the last one would be your two-year college, and the two big ones here would be, in, Ohio, uh, in our area, would be Lorain County Community College and Tri-C. Uh, why are those good avenues? Again, if you're not ready for college and you have an interest that, you know, for example, uh, you know, nursing, you know, you can go get a uh, associate's degree in nursing and still get a job at the Cleveland Clinic for, you know, half the cost of what it would cost to pay for a four-year school. Also, the community colleges have articulation agreements with most of the state schools, so you do your two years, there's a series of requirements you have to fulfill. If you fill those requirements, you're then automatically admitted into one of the state universities here in Ohio that you have an, uh, that the articulation, articulation agreement is with. So there are some benefits to there too. If money is a major issue, it is another way to cut costs. So you can do it to community college for two years and then matriculate to whatever the four-year university is to cut the cost down, if that makes sense. So again, there are lots of options for college. And again, as I started out talking about the right fit, what is best for your child and your family to make it work. 
I listed three words here that I guess I wanted to, to speak about a little bit, and I'll touch on my background again a little bit. One is athletics, the other is the arts, the other word I had here is passion. I found in my time here that if you are a good athlete, a very good athlete, there's, other than your academic profile, there's nothing that can hold more weight on a college admissions process than a sport. And it does not always mean that you are a scholarship athlete. Okay, but I will start with the scholarship athlete. If you are a recruitable Division I athlete, probably by the time you're 16 years old or in the 10th grade, you will know that. Somebody will be contacting me for your transcript or your counselor for that child's transcript. Somebody would have reached out to a coach. Some unbeknown way, people get your phone number and somebody's calling saying, hey, can you show up at my camp or my clinic? You will know. You can think what you want to think, but if your kid's really it, trust me, you will know it. But if your kid is not the Division I athlete, here's what you are. You become your kid's press agent. You take video, you take your kid to camp, you fill out athletic questionnaires online, you call people, every, save every newspaper clipping. And back when I was being recruited as an athlete, and the reason I can tell you this has changed, you could lie. I mean, I'm great. There was no internet, you know. <laughs> I had one newspaper clip and I sent it to every college in the country. I was great. <laughs> I wasn't so great. <laughs> but there was no fact checking back then. Uh, but now, I mean, a coach will tell you, it's like, well, what's the kid's name? And within 30 seconds, they can have your whole bio. Times where you competed, you know, if that first place was really a first place, it was just you in the race. I mean, they can, they can, they, <laughs> they can find all that stuff out now. So sports can be a very big deal. And again, I say, if you're not a scholarship athlete, say you are the scholar and your dream is like, man, I really wanted to play for Yale, but I can't. But Amherst and Williams are two of the most selective private liberal arts colleges in the country. And I'm strong, but maybe my grades are just a little bit below what they're looking for for admission. But if that football coach says, hey, we want you, trust me, if you're in the ballpark, that sport will be the thing that will get you, and it's called slots. For every school, regardless if it's Division III, Division II, they'll have three or four spaces carved out, maybe for football 15, but they'll have three or four spaces carved out for athletes. And I can tell you here at Lake Ridge Academy, we don't have many Division I athletes, but we have a plethora of Division III athletes. And those coaches or that admissions office will call me the summer before their senior year and ask me to send a transcript. And if the numbers work, they'll say, if they apply early decision, we can guarantee their interest to our university. So sports can make a big difference. So again, there's no scholarship, but sometimes it's just, I want to be at X school. And so sports can be a big deal in the process. The other piece would be the arts. If you are a pianist, a singer, an actor, a studio artist, those things too are a huge deal. So I would tell you, you know, if you can get, uh, things put on a CD, if you can get slides made. But before you do all that, and I'm, I'm going to back up here, both on sports and the arts, because this is real. This is one of the most difficult parts of my job. Have somebody truly evaluate your child. This process is about, about being honest, because you could think your kid is phenomenal. <laughs> Greatest thing ever. And then you take them to somebody to really evaluate them, and it's like, you know, maybe. But we're not talking Division I. You had your kid all slighted, you know, to sign with Stanford and just not a reality. So get a true evaluation of your kid's art talent as well as their athletic talent. And their camps will do that for you. Or if you trust a coach who's been around the block a few times, to get that types of things evaluated. I got five minutes. I'm not even 25% of the way through my presentation. So, all right, real quickly, I'll go fast. Something I'm introducing to our population, so you'll be the first one to hear it this year, and I came up with this as I was talking to a student. When you're looking for a college, the three Ps, the first P, people. You want your kid to be around like-minded people intellectually, socially, spiritually, organically, whatever word you want to use. And what I mean by that, you know, if these are things that are important to you, diversity, you know, the socioeconomic stratus, the aptitude of the students, is it a friendly environment, is it conservative, are the students outdoorsy, are there some more liberal students, is it a party school, like, know your kid, know the type of environment they fit into, because the people are very important. It could be a great school, but if your kids hate the people, they're not going to do well, unless they're a very tunnel vision individual. The second thing is the place. 
Very, again, very, very important. What do I mean by place? Is it an urban environment, suburban, rural, big city, small town, college town? All those six things I just named will give you a different college experience. Is it a green campus? Are there old buildings with a lot of tradition? Are there modern buildings, modern buildings, small campus, large campus, sunny environment? You may not think that's a big deal, but when you're from Cleveland like all of us are, my daughter's absolutes were, Dad, I don't want to go to a place colder than Cleveland and it has to have more sun. And there's a website, comparisoncity.whatever, and this is a true story. Cleveland only gets 159 sunny days. We sent her some place that had 209 sunny days. That's the danger of being a college counselor. Who else does that? <laughs> uh, but sunny, snowy, warm, cold. Is there opportunities to ski? Is it a biking camp? Do you have to ride buses to classes? Really understand the place. The last part, which is probably the most important part, is the program. Do they have a good academic reputation, not school-wise, but what I want to study or what your child wants to study? Do they have the major? Very important parents. Is the career services office good? Are the kids getting jobs? And if they are, where are they being placed and what are the salaries? Do they have good grad school placement rate? Because again, as I had a kid a few years ago, like he was Columbia all the way. And he was close, but his numbers weren't there. But he wanted to be an engineer. I'm like, I talk to my kids, dude, they're like 56 in engineering. You can get into Purdue. It's the 10th best engineering program in the country. And he ended up at Purdue. But sometimes it's program prestige rather than college name prestige. Nobody asks an adult in the room, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, for all of you who have college degrees, once you start your prayer, where did you go to school? The next thing I'll say about the where do you go to school part, it's really cool to talk about where your kid goes to school and you have the bumper sticker on the back of your car. That's really cool the first three years. Year four, you know what people ask you, what are they going to do next? The fourth year, fifth year, where are they working? Are they at the house? I never thought this would be a big achievement in my life. I'm, I'm put this on, 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 on front street for all the parents in the room. I have a son that's 25. He has a pretty good job. He moved back home. He's paying rent. But you know what the big deal was? He came off my car insurance this year. <laughs> that was like a big deal. That was like a highlight. <laughs> Other pieces. The average student now who's borrowing is graduating with about $30,000 of loan debt. So again, we talk about that right fit. The financial aspect of this is very important as well. The value that you're going to receive from the school in terms of job, that statistic I put up, the four-year graduation rate, all those things, because again, you're paying this money, you're thinking four years, what if it turns into five or six? Now you've added on, potentially, $100,000 if it's a private school. So again, you want to think about all those things. I'm still trying to move fast. What can I do in 60 seconds? Okay, I'll end with this. The college admissions process. Again, I'll start with the simple. There's one system that I've deemed, I call it the matrix. You have this grade point average, you have this test score. If you're above the bar, you're in. If you don't, you're not. Okay, that's very general. The one I want to spend the most time talking about because again, my environment, we send lots of kids to private schools or selective schools. I'll say, and again, this is not an absolute, but this is kind of a generic sketch. If we take 100%, 50% of this process is going to be what your child does every day. That's their curriculum. What type of classes are they taking? Are they taking the best courses in their high school, whatever their aptitude is. The second piece is going to be how well they performed in those classes. The third piece is going to be how strong the high school is. And I see a couple of admissions folks in the back there uh, that you'll be speaking with later. Not all high schools are the same, which means all A's are not the same. And if I hearken you back to where I started in my presentation, when I talked about my dean told me independent schools program in terms of what they've been exposed to is a little bit different. Colleges evaluate the strength of the high school, okay? So that's generally, I would say, that's kind of 50% of The next 25% is gonna be things you do have control over. That's your college essay, who writes your letter of recommendations, and what you do inside and outside of school in terms of activities, sports, community service, job, those sorts of things. And then the final 25%, again, generically speaking, are gonna be your standardized test scores. Uh, ACT or SAT, and then there's also one website I'm gonna give you, it's called fairtest.org. There's also numerous schools now moving to what's called test optional. And these are some phenomenal schools. Doesn't mean it's not a good school because they don't use test scores. It just means they're evaluating you in a holistic process. It's called fredtest.org. There are hundreds of schools there where SAT or uh, ACT are not required. They're going to look at the student, their grades, their, their uh, essays, and all the other things that I mentioned. I got more, but I got to wrap up. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs>